you admire so much about Ray Ch Charles? Why do you identify with him? And why that meant a lot to you um, to, to cut something with him? Well, I mean, Ray Charles is one of um, America's classic artists. And um, he really sort of paved the way for black music on radio, you know, and um, just such an iconic individual and been around for so long and also had some of the same demons that I had and, and survived it. Did you talk about doing that? Talk, never talked about that. Really? Never, I never wanted to even go never there. Never saw that. online. But you say in the book, though, that you, the two of you shared sort of this unspoken bond that only junkies share. You well, yeah, <laughs> I guess. I never really stopped to think of it that way. But um, for, some, for some reason, you know, I got this phone call to come play on Ray's record. I don't think at the time Ray was really aware of who I was. I think he was the producer. And uh, so like, I went down there and met Ray and heard the song and played on it. And he really liked it. He came in after I did it and really liked it. And so offered for me to do some other stuff. And then I ended up getting involved with his band. Uh, re-recording a bunch of his classics for Ray movies. And so I was just hanging out with him to see how amazingly talented, you know, to see somebody who's so um, great at what they do and, and somebody who's actually um, sort of invented a lot of the styles that he, you know, that he does and, and made it sort of a popular kind of thing. It's really a trip to be around. And so it was nice to be sort of let in there and, and, and sort of respected as a mutual musician to be able to work. Did he say anything to you that you'll never forget? Did he, did he ever turn to you at a moment and say something that kind of stuck with you? A legend like Ray Charles? Yeah, right. I should have something to quote him on, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, about, what about Michael Jackson? Because you play guitar on Black and White. Yeah, I actually, let me just spell that sort of a minute. The song, the recorded song, Black and White, um, I did not play on. And you listen to that. <laughs> No, I mean, it doesn't sound like it. that is in a way. But um, I was asking to play on another song on the record called Give It To Me. That uh, was really the sort of showpiece for, for the guitar for me. And then there was the other thing, the reason I think I got sort of uh, mixed in with Black and White was when they shot the video, they took uh, some session stuff that I'd done when I first got to the studio and put it uh, in the video where Macaulay Culkin is getting yelled at by his dad and he's playing the guitar and making a bunch of noise at me. Gotcha. That's my association. But, but, but what, was, you know, what was it like to work with Michael Jackson? And you know, looking at his, his death last year as well, how how you saw that, how it might have affected you. Uh, people who saw the uh, the documentary that just recently came out, and Kira saw it. Uh, you're flying somewhere and she was watching it, and she said, "I never had such an idea that Michael Jackson was the level of perfectionist." Oh, yeah. That he yeah, it was really sad because I think we had this image of him and, and he was stereotyped in many ways. But when we watched that documentary, I mean, I couldn't stop wanting to hear what he was saying. Every little bitty thing. No, 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 that's how they stop. I want to do it again. And he would tap his foot and he would feel it. He'd close his eyes and he'd go, yes, that's it. I mean, it was very intense. Yeah, Michael was amazing. I mean, the, the Michael Jackson experience, I mean, a lot of people, that, again, like me stepping out of my box, right, to go play with Michael and, and alienating my rock fans and stuff. But even the <laughs> phone call from Michael Jackson was somebody I grew up with, you know, like Michael Jackson vibe and all that stuff, and, and it was very flattering, you know. So, so, yeah, I took the call, and I went down there, and I met him, and he's very unassuming, very sweet, you know, kind of guy, and sort of let me just have free reign to do whatever it was that I wanted. So he sort of invested in something that he knew about me without me even really knowing it and just said, just be you, just do your thing. And so that was, that was great. But I, when I went on to uh, do a bunch of shows with him, I got to see the, the level of perfection that you were talking about, his passion for it, and also what a guy through the talent that he has. He's fucking amazing to watch. And, uh, and it was a really great experience for me because um, he had all these attributes that as a, as a professional musician you want to have. So it was very inspiring. Now, when you say alienated all of your rock fans, did you, did you ever, did that ever enter into the calculus, or did you just say, wow, Michael Jackson wants me to come down and be in the studio? As, as a musical experience, right. that's something that I can't pass up. Yeah, exactly. Regardless yeah, of what I, I never really about. think about what everybody else is going to say until they say it. You know, I, I'm, I'm sort of on this journey, and I, I just do, I do a lot of stuff that is not necessarily expected of me, but I have a fun time doing it. I think that. 
um, there's, there's artists that completely transcend all labels and genres. And, you know, uh, Michael's one of them. And it's one of those experiences, and his friendship and just that whole, all those gigs that he did was uh, definitely a worthwhile miss for the world. It's sad that he's not here. And how did his passing affect you? It's just, you know, uh, uh, getting to know Michael, he's, he's a very similar kind of personality to me in the sense that everything is about music and everything's about the work, and there's absolutely nothing else going on, which is a lot of how being a musician is, is you spend all your time touring, and it's always all about the music, and it's about the show, and it's about the record. It's not about really anything else. I think it's for golf for some people. <laughs> and so it gives you a, a good idea when somebody of that stature, somebody who's you know that famous and that successful, starts to really exist in this bubble and doesn't have any sort of satisfying um, life outside of that. And people taking advantage of them and all that kind of stuff. And I watched it. For a so when all that stuff happened in 2000 or 2001, whenever it was, and he got all these sort of accusations and stuff. The one thing that Michael really wanted, you know, the one thing that made him happy was he wanted everybody to like it. And he was putting on the best show possible so everybody would think he was great. And that's how he sort of functioned. A um, little bit more depth to it than that, but you get the idea. And so all of a sudden he was completely ostracized, pretty much by North America, you know, for all these accusations, which even though he was acquitted, that was sort of how. Yeah, and it sort of just killed him, you know. So.